Wait, wait, put it up here. Yeah. What are you preaching yeah. tonight? If you want to, so. put there. Yeah. Okay, with, I would think. Smaller room. I'm surprised they don't have a bathroom in there. You want to talk about that part? Or. We can go just on the inside so it's a little bit of space here. Yeah. 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 Oh, good. Then I get to look at their backside. That's the emergency. Yeah. Huh? Do you want to move this one Yeah, we can. Sorry. Why not one of those? Since they're not coming. Yeah, there you go. There we go. I might want to, yeah, push the button so it's up. Trip. Where am I? I want yep. to so askew. I can hear you, Phyllis. Okay. I'm trying to figure out why my camera is so askew. <laughs> you can hear me okay? Yeah, you're in good shape, Betty. Great, thank you. This is a I had a tough time getting in this way. Did you? Mm -hmm. I went to airline. I went to airplane mode on me. We all must have hit that. Yeah. Put it on. I don't have to use my Apple at home, but I, I used this one this last night, this morning to get through the agenda. Yeah. Library, that was only about what, 50, 50 pages. There was 112 pages in the library. No, oh, yeah, that's about half of it. Yes. Uh, you, get to, you get the thorough report. Yeah. Daniel does a good job. Yes, he does. I will give him that. I can't say I read the whole thing, but. I'm going to call the meeting to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. This is to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mockler. Here. Packard. Here. Smith. Here. Manning. Here. Hammonds. Here. Any conflict of interest declarations? Hearing none. Approve agenda. Uh, did everybody get the what I had Carrie send for the garage door? Garage door. I, I got it. The agenda. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Move with that addition. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Uh, roll call. Hammonds. Here. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Ockler. Yes. Motion passes. Approve minutes. Move to approve the minutes. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Ockler. Yes. Motion passes. Are there any visitors to be heard with something that isn't on the agenda. <laughs> this is on the agenda though. Julie, this is on the agenda. So I don't need to. No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't quite know this was. Um, Drew, we'll start with you. Okay. 
Drew, are you starting with the campground? Yes. Okay. Do you guys need to be in board of adjustment for this? Here in appeal, yes. Thank you, right. Thank you, Karen. Yes. Well, we didn't list it. It's listed on the agenda okay. as the as the appeal. So you just okay. need to make an motion to yep. go into board of adjustment. Move to uh, go out of commission and into board of adjustment. I'll oh, second that. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes, we are now the Board of Adjustment. On uh, 8.30 of 2021 and 9.27 of 2021, the Clay County Planning Commission heard uh, application for a private recreation area campground in at approximately uh, 45426 318th Street, Vermilion, South Dakota. Legal description is east half of the west half, the southwest quarter in section 16, uh, 9253 west of the west of the fifth prime median, Clay County, South Dakota. The land for the proposed uh, private recreational is zoned A1 agricultural. It's approximately 40 acres in size. It is bordered by the west by one residential property, one house, five acre parcel and crop ground. To the north, east and south by acre, uh, additional crop ground. Gravel Township roads currently serve the access to the proposed site. Uh, my recommendation is zoning administrator to the board. Uh, Denied the conditional use request for the following reasons. The proposed 408 recreational areas with individual fire pits, water and sewer hookups, as well as uh, picnic areas, playgrounds, access roads, and a storm shelter is obviously not for an individual or private use. The owners clearly intend it to be some kind of business open to the public for a fee and is such a commercial use. Uh, such use is only eligible in the uh, commercial zoned district under a recreational facility commercial. Number two, a large campground immediately adjoining residential property in the area is proposed may not have general compatibility with the adjoining properties and other properties in the zoning district uh, in which such use to be located. That's just taken from section 11.05-C2 H of the zoning ordinance. In their findings from in the Planning and Zoning Commission's findings, the commission found the CUP was not for private use, and this use is not generally compatible with the adjoining properties and other properties in the zoning district to which uh, such used to be located. The Planning Commission is empowered or was empowered by the zoning ordinance to grant uh, the requested conditional use permit. The Clay County Planning Commission finds requested conditional use is inconsistent with the intent of the zoning ordinance and denies the conditional use permit. Any questions? Pardon me? I guess that would be me. That's you. <laughs> okay. Um, and is it all right if I sit and talk? Yes. Okay. Um, we're asking that the Board of Adjustment approve the conditional use permit for the 408 camp ground. Do you want to state your name? For oh, I'm sorry. Here? I'm sorry. Wanda Howie Fox, attorney for Michelle Hauk. I'm here with Mike Hauk and Chad Grunewald, who are agents on behalf of Mike or Michelle Hauk. Back to where I was. Um, I'm sorry. We're here asking that the Board of Adjustment approve the conditional use permit for the 408 campground sites 
Uh, we anticipate that we would build it in three stages, not all at one time. We anticipate that the middle, what I'll call the middle stage, the middle stage will go first. Each of the campground sites would have a fire pit. There will be a playground. They'll have water and sewer, internet hookup, and there will be an on-site manager, if you will. I don't know if that's the correct word. And then assuming that the first stage, which is the middle stage goes well, then we would build on the further south side. And then the last um, part, stage three would be on the north end. And I, that's our anticipated way of doing it. I understand that there are some people that um, would prefer not to have the campground there because they believe that the, at least from the other hearings, that it will cause congestion on the river. However, the it's my understanding from speaking to uh, folks that part of the uh, states and federal monies will be used to enhance the uh, place the boat ramps at the end of the street. And my understanding is there are people in that area who are against it because they think it will take hours to get their boats in the water. My understanding, although I do not live here, my understanding is it doesn't take hours now and I don't anticipate it will take hours in the future. Uh, I think it would be a benefit to Clay County. It would be benefit, beneficial to businesses in the city of Vermilion. And it's my understanding that the city of Vermilion has indicated that they are in favor of it. Um, when we were looking at this plan, Mike Halk is my name. When we were looking at this plan and we were looking through the ordinances and the part that we chose was the private recreation area in Agland. We also looked to see what the definition of the private recreation area was in the definitions of the county. We were not able to find it. Could be a little closer to the mic. We looked to see about putting this in uh, Agland under private recreation. So we looked up what the definition of private recreation is, and there isn't one. So we looked at some other places and private recreation was for hiking and biking and different things like that. Any leisure time activities, which we believe that this would fall underneath. So I don't know when you guys see it doesn't meet the criteria of the, the ordinance. Um, there's no definition of private recreation area. So how can this not be allowed if it doesn't have a definition? So there are there are other counties that have those definitions, but I don't didn't bring that with me today. But um, we feel it would fit into that private recreation area. Oh, thank you. Are there any other proponents? Hearing none. Opponents. If, you, if we could have you come up and speak at the podium, state your name. I'll be there in about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good day. <laughs> Got to shuffle everybody around. <laughs> no traffic and everything. This is the button. All right. Uh, can I be heard? I mean, can you hear me? Thank you. My name is Steve Sanford. Um, I'm uh, here on behalf of my wife, uh, who owns uh, a lot uh, in Homes Force Edition, uh, and also uh, other uh, uh, persons uh, who reside or have uh, homes uh, in uh, Homes Force Edition. Um, this is 
what? It's a commercial recreational facility, all right? While private is not defined, uh, uh, commercial recreational facility is a category under your zoning laws. And it is not a permitted conditional use, period. That's the end of it. But going beyond that, you're likely familiar and have seen the area where this is to be put, all right? Now close your eyes. Close your eyes and picture on 40 acres, 400 camping slots occupied by 400 campers. And then scratch your head and say, well, is that compatible with the existing uses? Really? Of course it is not, all right? Of course it is not. Uh, and to whether you sit as a board of adjustment or whether you sit as the county commission in, in the appeal procedure that is called for by your zoning ordinance, this does not fit. It violates in spades the intent uh, of your zoning plan uh, and uh, the, the zoning ordinance itself, all right? Um, while it's talked about it's going to be in, well, three phases, you allow it. Why, why can't you, you'd have to say that the whole thing can be done, all right? And if you say that in fact, this is just fine and is compatible with the existing uses there, what wouldn't be? I mean, what's the next thing coming? Uh, how could you not say that the densest use you could imagine would be permissible? And to do so would turn your back on what you did before by enacting the long range plan, the zoning plan and the zoning ordinance. And with due respect to the proponents, I still say, this is just uh, a black and white violation and the appeal should be denied and the decision of uh, your planning commission should be affirmed. Thank you. Any other opponents? Okay, thank you. Please, I have a face for radio. The camera's a long way away, you'll be okay. <laughs> We'll, we'll take our chances on it, Tom. Yeah, well, I'm wearing a mask. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate the, the opportunity to speak. My name's Tom Sorensen. Um, uh, Mary and I own land uh, also in Holmes Forest Edition. And it's uh, right on in the edge of the uh, Missouri Recreational National Recreational River. Uh, which uh, does include boating and hiking and fishing and that kind of thing, kayaking, quite a bit of that, canoeing by uh, some of the neighbors down there who even have a youth camp sometimes. Uh, my questions all lead to, this is not a good idea for the existing use. Our ordinance is in place for a reason. And we are relying on you to help protect us by upholding that ordinance. And with all due respect to Mike, who I consider a friend and, uh, and uh, counsel, uh, I, I, uh, I'm just against this and Mary is against this. And I can't speak for the other neighbors because they should speak for themselves. <laughs> Ms. Fox mentioned Three, three stages. 
And as, as Mr. Sanford alluded to, what are stages four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10? Where is this going? No, this is a big definite no. Uh, your, your imagination runs wild. You know, how many convenience stores are gonna end up? Will beer eventually be sold by someone who is known for crowding as many people as they can up to the legal limit and then building on the roof to make even more room to sell beer? Uh, this, this just leads to so many no's. Um, our main concern is traffic on 318, 455, and 454. Those are the roads that lead to the boat ramp. And there's already quite a bit of traffic on it, but uh, the, uh, the boat ramp is busy. I don't know what your, your estimate of time is based on whether it's an hour or not, or who you've talked to, or how many people you've talked to, I don't know. But I can tell you as a landowner who likes being near a national park in a, a federal park, uh, this is just a big no, this would start, this would start, this would snowball, I can't believe. So please follow the ordinance and say no. And thank you very much for the opportunity to speak and for your time. Good morning. I'm Marlise Knoll, and my wife and I own the only house on 318th Street. Uh, we spent a couple of years looking for a place to retire and chose that uh, 15 acre. Oh, farm on 318th Street. And we wanted specifically to move into a rural area. If you look at the land, there's nothing but farms in our house. To put a campground just down the road from us is going to increase traffic. I expect that there'll be noise. I also expect that you know, given how people are at campgrounds, uh, they don't own the land, so they have no vested interest in behaving themselves. Uh, the road 318th Street right now is not in great shape, uh, nor is 454th. I mean, it's a 454th is a washboard right now, but <coughs> We really think that from the standpoint of quality of life, both to the people who live along River Road and for us, that this will represent a significant deterioration in the quality of our living. And we came to that place because of how it is now, not because of some campground down the road. And if you look at the 400 spaces, you figure three people per camper, that's 1,200 people. That's more, that's four or five times more people than they're in the whole township of Norway. So I just don't see how that fits. I also think it's very telling that we haven't heard one person in favor of the campground, other than the people who are proposing it that the city of Vermillion thinks it's a good idea, I think is completely irrelevant. We're not the city, we're out of the city. Uh, I, you know, nobody's, as far as I know, has written any letters to the zoning commissioners or to you saying they think that this should be done. So it's beyond me why this should be approved when nobody, else other than Mike and Chad are in favor of it. Thank you. My name is uh, Daniel Johnson and I'm speaking as a friend of the Missouri River, uh, National Recreational River. I'm a frequent user of the river 
I actually live in Yankton, but um, if you go to the website of the National Park, it refers to the reason that the park exists is that these two sections of freely running Missouri River um, are vestiges, it actually says vestiges of the untamed West. And I think the word vestige is really important because this is a really rare and valuable habitat. Um, it gives one a sense of what Lewis and Clark saw and it, it's rare. That's the reason we have a national park. Having the national park is a huge asset to the city of Vermilion and to Clay County, as well as Yankton and Yankton County. And I think it's desirable as a place to build a private campground because it, it's sort of fallen a victim to its own success. It is so unique, so beautiful, so desirable to be close to it. But we've already decided as a, as a, you know, a county, as a state, as a nation that we will set aside and preserve these last remaining areas that are rather untrammeled and, and undeveloped. And, and I, I just think it would be out of character to, to sacrifice the, the ambiance of the river the way it is right now, because it is really, really valuable land, just as it is. And thank you for listening. And I um, appreciate the chance to speak. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Julie Holter and I'm coming here. We own the land at 45425 River Road, which is right next to it. And with all due respect to the proponents, including Mike, who I know keeps an eye on our place from time to time, we appreciate it. Um, my family would also prefer that this not happen. This is, they've had this place down there for over 40 years and it's been a residential, very quiet, um, pleasant place. We also launch a boat at High Lines and would have some concern um, about the backup that could have happen at High Lines. But we also would have some concern with bringing this many camp spots on vandalism and the things that come with it, something that we've been free of. I, I support what everybody before me has said, and I won't repeat it all. Um, but, but we also would prefer that this not be developed. Thank you. Morning, I'm Jerry Wilson. Uh, uh, again, I don't want to repeat what's already been said, but I uh, fully agree with uh, the zoning administrator's conclusion that the, this uh, proposal is incompatible with our comprehensive plan and with our zoning regulations. And I would add that I am concerned that the Planning Commission is currently considering uh, amending the, uh, the zoning ordinance in a way that it seems to me could permit such ventures in the future, if not on this site, on other sites. And I urge people to uh, watch that carefully and uh, see what emerges. Um, I too am one of those people who frequently and every summer uh, haul my canoe down to the river and put it in at high line and float down a ways, maybe five miles, maybe 15 miles. Uh, and uh, enjoy the natural world that we still have here. Imagine if you lived in a big city, uh, how amazed you would be to see what we have here. Our own national park, this remaining short segment of the National Recreational River that is the gem, the jewel of Clay County. We're so fortunate to live here next to the river. And uh, Besides being incompatible with the comprehensive plan, the zoning ordinance, the wishes of the local residents, uh, and, and the, uh, besides the impact on uh, the road and the parking lot, which is on any nice uh, sun Saturday or Sunday afternoon already full. Uh, I don't know where we would park our old pickup when we finally get our canoe in because the parking lot would be full. But uh, for all those reasons, but mostly because of the importance of preserving uh, the natural resource that we have here, I would urge you uh, to uh, say no to this proposal. Thank you. 
everything there done? May I speak again? Yes. Hi, my name is John Mosier. Uh, my family and I live just west, northwest. Uh, our property butts up to this proposed campground. Uh, and I don't know if you guys have got any of the letters we've sent in the past, whatnot. Uh, I guess kind of just to put it in perspective, Lewis and Clark campground up there on the lake is I think roughly 418 actual camper pads on over a thousand acres managed by the GFP. They do a phenomenal job. And so this is basically trying to put similar amount with buildings on 40 acres. I guess my biggest fear is how it would be managed properly. I mean, I have spoke with the police department and they're not gonna come out there, you know, unless there's something major going on. And I guess, honestly, if something like this were to go through, I, we would move. I mean, it would be too dangerous, the traffic, I mean, and I don't know if we'd be able to sell our house. I mean, I don't know anybody that would want to live right next to a campsite, campground that didn't run it. Well, thank you. Anybody else? Suzanne Skurm, I live here in Vermilion. I do not have property out there, but I use Highline quite a bit to go kayaking from. And so I'm familiar with the area. Um, when the, the proposal, the proponents were talking about it, they said the use would include hiking and biking. And there's no place out there to hike or bike that I know of. It's, it's privately owned property um, on the river. The rest of it is farmland. So I don't know where that would come from. But in any case, um, I would second what everybody else said, 402 campsites, you know there's gonna be at least three people in each camper. Where's all that sewage gonna go? Where's the water gonna come from? What's gonna happen to the trash? We are so lucky here in Vermilion because we live on this jewel, this last place that is wild, the river. We need to protect it. We don't need to develop it because developing is just going to destroy what everybody loves about it. Thank you. Any other opponent? If there's nobody else. A quick follow-up that I forgot to mention and I apologize. I should disclose that in all honesty. I think you I, have to say your name again. I'm sorry. My name is Tom Holmes Sorensen. It's not official, but Holmes Forest Edition was my grandparents, and I didn't disclose that. I should. Um, and yes, there are developments along the river edge, but not off into the farmland. Um, the other thing I, I, I'm glad somebody reminded us, I think it was Jerry, about a, ch uh, a possible change of the ordinance itself, just another way to try to get around this. The other final thing that my daughter wanted me to say, uh, she was in the area when a young woman was murdered and her body was found at this point, and that's not solved yet. It's within the neighborhood. That has nothing to do that with this. That has nothing to do with it. It's the neighborhood. The neighborhood has to do with it, so thank you. Any other opponents? Hearing none, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Wanda Howie Fox again. Um, I just wanted to uh, speak to some of the things that some of the opponents have said. For example, the last lady who spoke, whose name I didn't get, um, indicated that somebody, one of us proponents talked about hiking and biking. Uh, we never talked about hiking and biking. I believe it was Mr. Sanford that may have spoken about hiking and biking. I would also point out that Clay County does run a campground and we believe that the campground that we are proposing, which has uh, barriers, has trees. I don't know, um, I don't know exactly uh, 
where Miss Post lives, but it seems to me that she's overly concerned about the noise of a campground when there is a housing development right along the river that's far closer to her than the campground would be. Further, I would like to point out that as some of these other gentlemen had said, this is a butts up on a national park. And apparently they think that the only people that should use the uh, Missouri River National Park are the 50 to 100 people that live in that area, which you know it seems to be unfortunate because a lot more people should be able to enjoy that park. I would also point out that uh, the application was filed on July 9th and more the far more than 65 days has passed since, since uh, the application was made. Uh, Mr. Hauk wants me to remind the folks that his wife, her dad, and grandfather owned the river frontage before it was developed. And, and uh, apparently all of the folks that live along the river's edge and in this addition uh, thought it was fine to develop it at that time. And now they are resistant to having anybody else enjoy the area. We're talking people that are coming basically on the weekends to get away from towns like Sioux Falls and Sioux City and Omaha to just come and be out in the nature. And we suggest that it would be a good thing for uh, Clay County. Did you want to? Just reiterating what Juan had said about Chad Grunwald. What's the name? Chad Grunwald. To reiterate, the, app, the official application was done on July 9th, and no official uh, decision was made or motion was made to make any decision before you tabled it, which extended that date to you guys made a decision on September 30th. Well, the 65 days in your statute to make a decision was up September 4th, which automatically um, passes for that permit to build. Just as a reminder, think about that in the, in the appeal. And to reiterate, the chamber did write a letter to you guys recommending you guys consider um, approving it to allow another campground to take pressure off of the current campground that you guys run. Um, that was written by Nate Welch, received by the planning and your guys's um, board also. So that was sent in the packet. Um, so when it was reference of the city, that it was not the city, it was the chamber who also you guys pay to help promote and bring tourism to our county. So Are you an opponent or proponent? Can I speak as an opponent? I can't because I already we already stopped. So hearing nothing else, I'm going to close the public hearing or public comment part. Um, comments from the board? Well, I guess reading through it, I mean, I understand everybody's point here really do but it, it looks to me like the way our ordinance is really written now is that this would have to be a commercial i i've read through it i don't know since we first started talking about it but everything i've read it looks like it's commercial to me and so i guess i feel that it doesn't matter i mean it does matter what everybody thinks here but the only thing is I think what matters is that we have to follow what the ordinance says. In that respect, I have to follow that I would probably, I would be voting against this and approve what the planning committee's already said. Yeah, so, oh. Go ahead, Betty. Okay, yeah, so, um, <clears throat> It seems to me that, yeah, I mean, we, this is definitely incompatible with the plan of development. 
and you know with with good reason um you know i i i think that the plan of development needs to reflect um the vision of the entire community uh for um uh, you know, pr property uses, um, I think that there is a real love and respect. Um, the research uh, that I did, uh, I was a, uh, <clears throat> still an active, active researcher, was fascinating to me. I did um, 10 focus groups among um, residents of, of uh, <clears throat> the area, and we we specifically went after senior citizens, uh, people who had lived there here their whole lives, young families and so on. And the, 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 the one commonality in all of those 10 focus groups was people uh, care about um, the Missouri National Recreation River and they want the river to continue um, you know, to be this very, very special, special place that it is. So I think we have, the incompatible use problem, um, you know, I, I think we really need to do some thinking as a county about the role of a national park um, in, in our county and how, how we want to use it. Um, but I, I think there's one other issue that I find really compelling, um, which is that um, citizens have a right um, to uh, peaceful enjoyment of their property. The US Supreme Court uh, has basically said that zoning must respect that and zoning decisions must respect that. Um, and so when, you know, when the entire um, existing uh, neighborhood stands up and says, no, actually I'll move, but I, I don't know if I can sell my house and yeah, my family's lived here for generations and we've been using this property our whole lives. and this would destroy our peaceful use of the property. I mean, I, I, I think we need to listen to that. Um, and so I, I, will, I will certainly be voting no. Nick, do you have something? I, yeah, I, I uh, moved back to where Mike was, is that in reading through the, the record uh, that was assembled for this, uh, action that uh, I too see that there's a distinction between the private and uh, public uh, uh, use of property. And this is definitely, uh, the proposal would be a public use, it looks to me. Uh, it wouldn't fit what a general private use might be. So I move uh, denial of the permit to support the planning and zoning board and its action. I have a motion to deny. I will second that. Um, I haven't spoken yet. It is in obvious commercial development, putting over 400 spots in 40 acres is way over the capacity of that land um, for, I, I guess I don't even understand how you could handle the sewer problem, but just the zoning states that it is not appropriate and I will second Hammond's motion. So I have a motion and a second, any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I respect 
Yeah. You're, you're welcome to. You're welcome to. I'm I was, sure. I was thinking about getting up and sneaking out with him. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, then for a while, I was the only one in here. I was thinking you were going to not show up. <sighs> I wasn't going to let you down. Yeah. Well, I was going to start the meeting and adjourn it. <laughs> Jerry and I were there. Well, then let's let's get to the hot topic of the day. Yeah. Okay, our GIS. <laughs> oh, we need yes. an motion to come out. Oh, that's right. Adjustment. We need to get back a motion to come out of what's called that? Board of Adjustment. Board of Adjustment. Adjustment. Thank you. And reconvene as the county commission. Thank you. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes. We're the county commission. I'll do that. Yeah, yes. I've got a follow-up question. Does our zoning in any way deal with things like how much, how they would address the sewer of something of that size? I think that goes under the conditional use permit. Because I'm, if it was, a, it's I'm trying to remember what the commercial when they when they have to come in for the commercial zoning, not but, really. You did mention it in your in your uh, verbiage in referring back to the to the ordinances. You yep. did mention uh, uh, sewer sewer hookups, yeah, sewer sewer uh, impacts. But as far as our ordinance doesn't handle it because it it falls under the state to regulate septic tanks or sewage disposal. Uh huh. But so they would like I mean, that would have kicked it out even before it got to us. Well, it, it probably should have done something different there. To be but. exact, <laughs> the on page three and in, in your your work, uh, it says the Clay County Comprehensive Plan states blah 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 blah, yeah. and then we'll get on down to uh, uh, conflicts to be mitigated included. Increased noise, traffic, flooding, erosion from storm drainage, road maintenance concerns, odors, and groundwater pollution from septic systems. Yeah, in the comprehensive plan, there's some language, but it doesn't detail what those protections no, are. It, it just further says after the next sentence is the future land use plan encourages the majority of commercial and industrial development to look within cities and along major highway corridors, that is South Dakota Highway 50 and Highway 19. And that's the result of those previous concerns. Okay. So I asked Drew to find out about this ARC GIS. So when FEMA came out with the new floodplain maps, they used to have a website where the surveyors could go to get the different flood elevation information that they needed for surveys. When the new maps came out, they took that website down and they have not yet brought it back. Um, there are ways surveyors can get that information. Through, I don't understand the, the surveying part of that, but I know it's out there. One surveyor I'm dealing with uh, doesn't want to use those other methods for whatever reason. Okay. He works over in Yankton County where the new FEMA floodplain maps added hundreds, if not thousands, of new homes. So the county over there bought the, the art map program, put the FEMA maps up on there so that the county itself could give those individual <coughs> surveyors the information. Uh, as a contrast in Union County, all their surveyors work for engineering firms and they've already got the art map software. So they just have the stuff on hand. Um, the idea that Travis had me look into is what it would take for us to get that FEMA or the ArcGIS software. So we could upload the FEMA maps and I could have it at my computer and then give it out for this surveyor or anybody else who comes in. What we found was it'd be about $1,500 for the initial cost and about $300 a year after that. 
I have really, really thought about putting this in my budget uh, this year and I decided against it just because it was just that one use that we were talking about. But as it might be a use later on, and there's a lot of other things I can use the software for, uh, 911 addressing, keeping our uh, zoning map up to date, which is really pressing concern right now, considering, as well as the, the uh, highway project is something else we can use it for. And all that would be it was an extension to the map that we already have. Mm -hmm. So it would still all be live on the server. All he has is a, an extension, I think is where they use for it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what, because um, Ericsson's have to do help set that up. And I don't know what their cost is. But you said 1500 for the initial cost. And then what was 300 it? 300 a month after, or 300, 300 a year. 300, 300 a year after yeah. that, okay. Um, yeah. The two big challenges is A, I don't know if my computer is going to have the horsepower to run this. We might have to update. And two, this is an extremely technical, this isn't like Microsoft Paint or no, no, this is a this is an engineering piece of software. I'm hoping I can figure out how to use it. Uh, my we'll my keep the box that it comes in. <laughs> <laughs> my understanding uh, from using other software like this uh, and is that uh, ARC, uh, this is like ARC Info, and it's, uh, uh, it's the basis software that most mapping software like Beacon and, and the other mapping software we already use, it's what it's based on. It's the, it's the underlying support for all those other types of complex uh, uh, softwares that make using them simple. Uh, I've always termed ARC Info as being a uh, user hostile. <laughs> I, I, it's one of those sets of software itself that, uh, in my opinion, I, I, someone that uses ARC Info daily or even weekly, uh, it's, it's something that's got great power. Uh, because of uh, because of the way it's built, the, the architecture is very strong, and it's it's a software that goes back well, probably thirty years or so, I suppose, and it's been worked on and and worked on uh, time and time again afterwards to help support all these other mapping uses. So at least in the United States, it's a, kind of the basis for a lot of these other types of things like. Uh, Beacon and our other software mapping softwares we already use. It uh, is the basis of that. And uh, uh, I, 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 I probably uh, could very well, Drew, you would use it enough that he would get proficient at it, but it's a, it's a, a bugger to learn and then to use every time you use uh, some new wrinkle of it, there, and there's thousands of wrinkles in this. Uh, that you can use beneficially in the software. Every time you learn a new one, you gotta, you know, you gotta see how that works with the rest of it. So it's it's not that something's very simple, and that's my viewpoint. It could be could be that I'm off base here. It may have developed a lot in the last twenty years since I've used Arc, but okay. I'm trying to figure out if you're speaking for it or against it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for it if we would use it a lot. Okay, we already have ArcGIS. Yeah. So this is just an excerpt for it. And in our contract, we have two years of, two years, excuse me, two days of on-site training. We have not, we did use them last year, but they weren't here and they're not gonna come again this year because of all the COVID still protocol that they have in place but they are going to do some some training online and stuff and they do do quite a few webinars and that type of stuff so i don't think drew will probably be more pro proficient at it than our offices yeah and uh, what i'm saying is of, i got a lot of respect for what Laura does and that is like, i think the hardest challenge for us and that's that's we already own it because our other software packages are based upon that yeah, I, you know, I, I think there is a, a steep learning curve for GIS. I mean, I watched uh, students at USD 
took a whole course um, on using GIS, our public administration students, many of them did if they were planning on going into planning and zoning. Um, you know, I think the main advantage for us would be being able to layer maps, right? So you can, you can layer a, a FEMA water map and a zoning map and a, a infrastructure map and, 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 and so on to kind of see how um, various elements of the environment, um, you know, interact. So, yeah, it's a it's a really valuable tool, and I I, I think um, you know, particularly for planning, planning and zoning, um, you know, and 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 really the question would be, I mean, we've given Drew an awful an awful lot to do. His resume gets longer by the month, and I, you know, I I I, I think we we'd have to. Uh, you know, really figure out with him, uh, you know, the extent to which he would have, uh, you know, the time, um, you know, to really use it as, as it's intended to, uh, to be used. And then uh, one other question is whether, um, uh, uh, you know, I know that uh, when you sign a license with, um, with software developers um, and software companies, you often agree not to share. And so, um, you know, we, we would really have to look at the fine print as to whether we could, we could share these ArcGIS maps with surveyors. Is this available through a service or I think you mentioned, Drew mentioned that Union County uses what professional folks who have access to this and use it on a daily basis, if I understood it right. Yeah, um, they're, they're the engineer, the surveying engineering companies all have it. Wouldn't uh, it make more sense to work with a surveying office to help us on this? Someone who's already up and running this on a regular basis rather than expect Drew to have a very, what sounds like an extremely cumbersome and complicated system. We kind of already do with CCOG. They already handle like our current maps when we need to get those updated. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I, I got a spreadsheet already made up the, uh, all the zoning, uh, rezonings that we did to get updated on a map at some point. Unfortunately, Kristen uh, has resigned from CCOG and they're training up a new person there, uh, and they don't do the FEMA maps. So, uh, circling back to when we first started on this this discussion, you you said that the new FEMA maps are out for us, but the supporting data was removed from the web. Yeah, correct. Is there some? Uh, is the real solution that this uh, supporting data may be added back in the way it was before? That's the idea. Someday that website's going to come back. <laughs> when nobody seems to have an answer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, and, and again, if, you know, if it wasn't for, and this one surveyor isn't completely wrong, we should theoretically have that information. It's just we don't have a lot of those kind of properties in Clay County, like Indian County or, or Dakota Dunes has. So I want to say there was, when I looked, there was like, 50 or 60 new structures that were in the floodplain. Yeah. And maybe 20 some houses. Yeah, I don't, there wasn't a lot of houses, yeah. but. There's some green, I know there's a green vent site. They're going to need one on too. Um, but all it would be is, is adding a layer to our actual map. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Dan, do you use it? We do not have GIS on. You know, okay. it's user hostile. They don't. It's user hostile. Yeah. Have you have you looked at it before? You know, most uh, clients that we work with work through the planning districts for GIS. Who's speaking? Dan Johnson, Johnson Engineering. Yep. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Dan Johnson, Johnson Engineering. I was just commenting that no, we don't have GIS software at our office. Um, most of the clients that we work with tend to use the planning districts for that type of software. 
I'm not sure how Yankton County operates their beacon software. If that's done, I believe collectively through uh, PD3 in Yankton County in the mm -hmm. city, possibly. But uh, yeah, no familiarity with GIS software though, sorry. Yeah, it, it actually sounds to me as though the main use at the present for this would be a private person who wants it. Um, I, you know, I mean, Drew, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it doesn't sound like this is something that you're prepared to tackle and make full use of in the immediate future. One surveyor is trying to get one person's property out of the FEMA. He's trying to get what they call the Loma maps for the Loma letter update. Uh, their house, somebody's house just uh, east or west of town got included. Um, the surveyor isn't 100% wrong when he says we should have access to that. Uh, it just, he's the only one who's been pushing the issue. Um, yeah, so I, I, I mean, I guess I'd propose that we, you know, that we revisit this again at some point in the future. Um, you know, Drew, if, 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 if you on reflection find that it would really make a difference, um, you know, in your work and, uh, you know, planning and zoning's work, then it might make some sense, but to do it for one uh, private person who, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that that makes any sense for the taxpayers of the county. I'll agree with that. <laughs> Unless our staff really thinks we ought to pony up and buy it, I, uh, like it's I agree with Betty. Yeah, but is it easier to start building it now? Because by the time you figure out that we need it, then you got a lot to download and catch up to. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Let's. It, it, I, it's just the same discussion I had internally, and when I decided not to put it on the uh, budget, but there is a use for it and. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a powerful, I mean, yeah, and, yeah uh, it's a powerful piece of software and it'd be an upgrade for the entire county to have it. I mean, it's just more than one or just more than FEMA and planning and zoning. There's some other uses for it out there. The highway projects want to get those maps all up on our, would be a, a pretty powerful tool. I mean, all those maps you guys see over there, all those under the table, those are FEMA, so that's how you generate them. Uh, and you add stuff to it, remove it. Uh, I don't know, I just. In this case though, we would be downloading a female layer to our uh, Arc Info software, or possibly could, is, would this be something that would go into Beacon then, or some of the other well, layers? Well, we could, but I don't know that we would wanna pay that much for Beacon. The Beacon, the map on Beacon comes from our ArcGIS. We don't create it in Beacon. It just downloads into Beacon every night. So, but like CCOP, I call them because I, I'm working. I haven't been able to get much of it done. But um, the drainage maps, the ditches, and put the actual ditches in. We have the area that are taxed for those, but we don't have where the ditch is and stuff in a map. And I've been looking at that. And so um, that's not very well labeled. So I called CCOG and they can't find the map. Is this something you could do on that? Created. Potentially. Potentially. Uh, you know, can I build a pyramid? Potentially. Uh, have the tool and the, the knowledge. It might take some time, but yeah. Or you can find a layer out there somewhere, satellite imagery would be one. Yeah. Well, and I think we have started a lot of, have a lot of the layers already created that would be beneficial to him. So we're talking $1,500 and $300 a year. No, a month, wasn't it? A year, a year. A year. Oh, I just heard I, that. I guess I would recommend we do it. It's only gonna cost that much. 
We don't know what it's going to help us, how much it's going to help us in the future, but I think it's probably going to be something we're going to have to keep moving towards. If you're talking about the drainage ditches, they don't even have the map on it. And eventually that's something we can get on it. We know we got a lot going with the, uh, the zoning. And I think that that's something that we can use in the future. And I'm, we're not talking big money here. An initial $1,500, I realize it's 1500 bucks, but $300 a year on anything is pretty unique. So I guess I would recommend we do it. I'll make a motion that we do it, I guess. I have a motion. I'll, I'll do a second. That was I, a, I, I got a second the, for the discussion. And I think that the, uh, the purchase price is a minor part of what the cost is going to be. A lot of the cost is Drew's labor um, uh, loading in all this stuff. And, and I is going to end up probably loading a bunch of stuff in. And are there, uh, can we accomplish the same thing by having... Uh, an engineering firm or CCOG. It's part of what it looks to me like we pay CCOG for. Mm -hmm. and, uh, have them do the, doing this this stuff. Are we are we uh, paying CCOG to do some of these sorts of things and also buying software so we can have our own employee doing those sorts of things? So I have to second, but that's that. <laughs> I, what I'm saying is that, uh, yeah, let's give it a try. If it looks like it's something that's going to be a valuable tool to uh, our staff, we can continue on in the future. But uh, uh, just with the open eyes that uh, this purchase price is a small part of what we're talking about here. The stuff is hard, hard to work with. It takes a little while to get used to it. I'm way out of date. It may be they have made it much, much more user-friendly since yeah. I've done it. Well, I'm, I'm with you on... I'm never going to use it. I mean, I'm not going to be the one doing the day to day. So I'm still afraid of it now. <laughs> I've gone through the counseling. I had not found that word, but you were yeah, correct. Yeah. Yes. I mean, uh, well, uh, my question I'm in recovery. I'm in ARC info recovery yet. So. <laughs> my question so is will we be hiring another person to be dealing with this? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, but they're, they're, they're either going to use to it in order to actually use it. Right. Yeah. Well, the people we have on staff right now are either going to use it or we don't do it. Yeah. So I'm, I personally am going to lean heavy on you, your two offices, if this is worth doing. And that's the other point is other counties do have ARC, uh, ARC uh, employees. Right. Yeah. What city. other counties? Other counties. Uh, Minnehaha and, and uh, Pennington. I'm both are very large, very large staff. Correct, right? That's right. We are very small and very small staffed, asking our people to do way more than they should. Excuse me. Um, I I feel we should go to CCOG first and request that they provide this service. So how are we going to get that, if CCOG does it, how is it going to get onto our computer? Are we going to have to go talk to CCOG every time somebody wants those things? And then I'm, I'm just asking, I'm, you know? It's our data. We provide the data. They build the layer and we keep it up. It's the way I did envision it. Does that, so now, does that sound right to you? To our... To, yeah, I think let's try it and uh if I fail I'll fail gloriously okay <laughs> I've got I've got faith in in Drew you know so it's uh yeah. he's, got he's, a lot of this is good started, but it's just a, it's a you know getting everything else done and it's yeah, yeah. building building layers is the matter of adding data to a layer creating a layer and then adding data to it and uh, I've done this 30 years ago. And uh, so uh, that's what I, that's the, that's what uh, this long soliloquy I've done is, is explaining. So. And Snyder's is very good about training. Anytime you call them about, okay, I can't get this, this to close. They'll look at it and that type of stuff. Okay. They're very helpful. And their tools are a lot more user-friendly than 
when I started using it, what, 15 years ago, 20 years ago? And getting back to Phyllis with Seacog, and I don't know if it has anything to do with it, but we were lucky when Toby was there for 19 years. Mm -hmm. We're on our we're we're going on our fifth Toby now as soon as they replace Kristen. True. Yeah. Am I he left. It's just like every two years or every 18 months. Go ahead, Phyllis. Am I correct that Drew said he's willing to try? Yes. The the sound, I don't know if it's my ears or the mics on that side of the room, I catch about half of what's said. So Okay. Yeah, it so could be my ears. <laughs> Not good. So Drew, um, I, I would love to know your thoughts um, about how you would use the program. Uh, outside the FEMA uh, map layer, it would be really because I'm for like 911 addressing. Right now, I'm using Google Earth or going out to a site with the measuring wheel to get a 911 address. That's working, but I, I get addresses sometimes that I aren't popping up well on Google Earth. So having that that base 911 layer, I think, would be really great. The biggest one by a mile would be for the zoning maps. Every time we have a rezone, keeping that map layer updated uh, with the ordinance, you know, number and having that. I've already got a file kind of created that for updating all the stuff we've done over the last six years, or the county has done over the last six years. And then I know there's we're doing this uh, highway study. Um, there was talk early on about having smart map layers, um, and we've got a contractor who probably might be building those layers or something like that, mm -hmm. and the ability to retain and, and manage that information. Um, saying that, that's a lot of stuff. Uh, that that's a that's a big pot of stew right there. All right. Well, I'm sold. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's what I needed to hear. Will this allow us to? Let's just just say it's 2021 and we our zoning is this in a certain area, and 10 years down the road, we change the zoning. Will that old zoning still be a layer in there somewhere? Oh, or you can go. What what did that oh, use? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yes. label it um, zoning 2020, and then 10 years or five years, you can create a new layer every time it changes, and just give them a year that that. I like that being in-house because I know, and it wasn't when Drew was there, but we've lost a lot of maps out of the zoning office. So this would have something big you could have went back and looked at for the Byron situation. Oh, yeah. I yeah. suppose you could have, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would have told them when they had changed and how it changed and if it was ever commercial. Yeah. You know, work. Yeah. And it's possible to go back in and add historical maps also. Okay. We have the if we have the maps on hand, that's uh, they can be they can be downloaded into uh, layers. Okay. That's the problem. Those are the maps that are missing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, well, I, if more to go missing, we're we're ready then. Yeah. With the layer, hopefully. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this? Hearing done. Roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. So, Drew, you'll get her going. I'll start. Yeah, I've been waiting on phone calls back and emails back. So, whenever you get a contract, just let me know. Rod, we've got Dan with the annual bridge inspection. Yep, good morning. I'll let you. Good morning. Thank you for having us here again, commissioners. We sure appreciate that. Johnson Engineering, Dan Johnson. And uh, we did perform your annual bridge inspections this year. There were only three bridges on the inspection list this year. Um, we did have critical findings on all three of them. And that was just a result of the age and condition of the bridges uh, continuing to deteriorate. One of them we recommended closure on. I've got a report here for Rod and the commission um, to submit. And, um, you know, the, 
the cover letter and the summary of postings kind of tells the story of where things are at for this year. Uh, there was a structure seven south and six tenths east of Hub City that we recommended closure on. There were some issues with the abutment on the east side of that bridge that led to that recommendation. We had notified Rod back when we did the inspection that that closure needed to take place. Um, structure number 118 105 which is 10 10 and a half south and 11.8 east of irene and pleasant valley township we recommended that one was posted at five tons it was an old truss again as all three of these are and we recommended the posting be reduced to three tons i think i heard after the fact that rod and the commission had decided to close that bridge and then the third one was six south and 7.8 east of Irene and Riverside Township. That one was posted previously at five tons and we had recommended it for a two ton posting. And that has since been closed. You've closed that one as well. Okay. With and the, so, their recommendations also. We okay. have all the pedestrian bridges we need. Yeah, right. <laughs> so they were, the last one was Heller's. What was the second one? Excuse me. The last bridge he, the last bridge he mentioned was Heller's. Yep. What was the second one? Where's the second that? one was Wassland by Wassland. Okay. And the first one was one we call East of Bucks Ranch, but 313th. And you don't go north on University, you go straight, straight east to the river. Yep. Correct. Right. That was uh, that was on three thirteen. Yep. yep. And all all three of those have been they're barricaded, they're closed. You have closed all three of them. Okay. Yes. Yep. So yeah, basically, you could. can't go across the bottom anymore down there, can you? Mm -hmm. Without going around on the on the oil. Yep. You have to go up to three twelve to go around, or fifty. Well, no, three sixteen. Three sixteen, you can go over to Saginaw and come up. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, those three fourteen, three thirteen now are closed at the river. Yeah. East of, in between University and Greenfield. Mm -hmm. When they get down to two ton, I mean three tons. Right. Can't even drive a pickup across. Yeah. yeah, that's essentially a pedestrian bridge at right. that point. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So that's our report really for this year. Um, you know, I would give these to Rod today, and we've also given him an electronic copy of those, and so he can review. And, and if there are any questions that come up or anything like that, we'd be happy to help out, uh, answer questions as we can. So. Okay. So likely going forward next year and year, uh, year after, it may be that the, this new infrastructure bill that's got an emphasis on bridges may be of some help on some of these. It may be. I haven't heard of any state programs that are going to spin out of that yet. You know, there's the big program, the bridge improvement grant program. And I understand from Rod, you're doing some work with the demolition program that came up last year or within the last two years right um i would guess you're right though that there'll be new programs that but i have not heard of what those are going to be just yet no that's still it's still in the imagination of congress i right. think and congressional right. staff so yeah but looking ahead right. there'll be there should be rulemaking occurs over the next six months that that we may want to try to take advantage of absolutely Yep, definitely. And we'll look for your help in that, I'm sure. Yeah, yep, we help anywhere we can. You know, um, we've been involved with quite a few of your structure replacements over the years. And um, and so, you know, most recently, I think that Ash Creek uh, culvert is going to be put in place. Um, we, we had another one on Ash Creek, a bridge over on University Avenue that we did with you. and. So yeah, we'd be happy, happy to help out where we can. So, okay. and yeah, we sure appreciate working with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Anything else on that, Rod? 
Bid letting? Yeah, I'll have you have a copy of that. Yeah. Pitch for the removal of the bridge south of 314th Street on 463. Two. It's the one south of Manning's by Jeff Olson, where they the, the first one. The big one. Yes, the big one. So um I have this one to sign, or if you have one to no, sign, sign, it's um uh, 81.95% paid for by federal, and we gotta come up with 18.5%, which our share is. Twenty eight thousand five ninety six fifty, if it all stays estimate, and um, so that's kind of ballpark figure of what we figured it was going to cost us to do this. Like it was, it was higher to do it ourselves than it was to go through the state, and they're doing all the bid letting. So you sign that. Can I get a, can I get a motion to sign this? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammonds. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Hockler. Yes, motion passes. Anything else, Rod? Yeah, just yeah, just a couple of things. Um, the structure he was talking about over Ash Creek, what we fought to get easement on, was let for bid. Um, and it came in 10%, 10.5 over the engineering estimate, which was 400. The actual cost, 460,281 20. So our 20% of that is 92,056 bucks. And that's for that box, twin box culvert up by the land deans. So it went out for bid for next year construction. So just wanted to update you on that. Um, and the other update, we're under that bridge east of 19 on the Ballin Oil with a big scour problem. Um, and Dan's coming up to look because the piling are really exposed in the water now that we're getting the water down. The environmentalist from a different engineering firm, which is only one in eastern South Dakota, they just showed up so they can tell us if we can keep dewatering, make sure there's no Topeka shiners, frogs or bats, whatever. Just carp. So we're working on that to get that. I'm afraid after what we saw today, it's not going to be just put a bunch of rock in there and fill it back in. I'm afraid we're gonna to have to do some more for those pilings being exposed. And we haven't pumped it. We can't pump it out till the environmentalist is there. So we don't even know for sure how the deep the hole is under the bridge. So we'd be pumping out inside a coffer dam or just a no. little spot in the channel? No, it is actually a big scour hole, yeah. which has dropped like four feet this summer because it's so dry. And then we're required to pump it into downstream and we put up a dam, but it's it's going downstream. She allowed us to do a test pump yesterday to see if we could even, there's a lot of water in there, just see if we could even drop it. And yeah, we, in an hour and a half, we dropped it about two feet. So today we have two pumps four and a three inch going what kind of piling do we have in there wooden wooden yeah. piling it's a 1970 bridge and from under the piers they have cmp metal pipe 
down maybe 20 feet full of concrete to where the original dirt was. And we're seeing yesterday at least five to six feet of exposed wood under that. So I asked Dan to stop on his way back home because I'm sure we're gonna have to do something more and just put rock back in to fill it so we don't, you know, the piling, the bearing on the end of it is, yeah. you know, part of it, but also the friction on the side of it. And right now it looks like it's just sitting there on- Not much friction. Right, there. and there's, you know, a lot of truck traffic there. So yeah, this is something we need to- Who's the environmental engineer? Uh, Carrie Johnson from IMEG. Yeah. They used to be Clark. Yeah. And she's out of Minnesota or out of Sioux Falls office today anyway. Her and two others came down. So I'll have more to report at the end of the month what any kind of emergency declaration. <laughs> I'll have to get a hold of you. But you know, we had that bridge closed once earlier last fall or a year ago. I don't remember, but on account of the in, the abutments and the wing walls were so exposed, we got that closed. But then, I mean, they can't see underwater when they do the bridge inspection. And so that's why I wanted him to come up because hopefully today, uh, whatever we get to do is not going to get fixed this week. So is there, do we still have the uh, pile driving data? No. Uh, no. I've looked and uh, I, the only one I haven't checked with is Cody Axlin at the state and in the past, they haven't never been able to find any of our old, old bridge data. Larry and I went through files and files at the shop and back, you know, that was about the year we moved as a year they built the shop out there. So the office moved from the courthouse out to uh, Timber Road, and no, I have no idea what happened to all that old data. Well, without that data, it's going to be tough to do a cheap fix. Yeah. <laughs> huh. So that's why Bummer. Mr. Johnson's going to stop on his way home. He had no idea he was going to get asked to do that, but I thought as long as he's here, may save a trip. So. Yeah. Yep. But I'll, I'll keep you informed on that because that's kind of a critical bridge on a very busy road. So, and that's that's about all I have. Uh, we're going back to our winter hours on the 22nd of November. Congratulations. Well, unless, yeah, I don't know. Depends. <laughs> unless it warms up to 80 degrees and Forgets about snowing this weekend. Why we'll see. So, thank you. Thank Anything you. else for me? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> uh, did does this need to be mentioned that he's supposed to carry that he's supposed to sign that weed thing? Um, I don't think so. You guys remember earlier couple of few months ago, um, Dennis came in and had you add that weed to the noxious list. Yep. Yeah. Um, the, the, so you guys made the motion to go ahead and add it to the noxious list at that time, but now he has a paper that just needs to be signed to get that done. So, yeah, so on the other I don't, side, I don't think we have to have it on the agenda since you guys already approved it. This is a common moon. Yep. Flag on the other side. So we go sign, I guess. Yeah. He had surgery today on his shoulder, so he wasn't able to come. Just right here, Luke. Yeah. Thank you. We're about done, so don't run off yet. I'm going to ask you a question. Um, let's see, we're done there. The real estate, real estate tracker contract for the director of equalization. Do we have to authorize you to sign it? Yeah, what was the, what did we have her look at the last time, last week? 
There was a reason we didn't sign this last. Oh, we had just gotten it. Mm -hmm. yeah. had a chance to we look had at not it. had a chance to look at it. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I took a look through. And unless Lexi's got some thoughts on this thing. Yeah, no, I'd look fine to me. I, you know, it's a year to year agreement. So it's one year long, automatically renews um, 30 days notice if you don't want to. And so we've worked with this company, I think a number of us beforehand, I'm not, I didn't see anything that stood out to me that was concerning. So as long as the department head's good with it, I'm good with it. Authorize the chairman to sign. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes, motion passes. Monthly reports to be placed on file. And that one doesn't Everybody need a motion. I just have to put it on there that you saw them. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. We didn't add vouchers. Uh, vouchers are there. Vouchers are there. Oh, there, I missed them, sorry. Top. Top item. Mm -hmm. I thought it's, well, you jumped right to that real time. estate. So yeah. everybody got to see the vouchers. Yep. Yes. I move motion. approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? It was, yeah, it was uh, really illuminating to look through those this year or this month on where we where we're spending money on publishing is really expensive. It's it is. amazing. And thank you. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're giving. <laughs> giving them a, a really complete uh, accounting of, of what we what we say here. <laughs> and uh, uh, boy, this last month, I know some of it was multi-month, we spent over $18,000 on outside lawyers. But, uh, so we're happy to contribute to the profession, I guess. <laughs> and hopefully that cost Maybe will not be happy. lower next year, yes. you know, as, yes. the, as the contract yeah. starts to kick in, you know, without yeah. those. I and I did, is, when, we, when we looked at the budget for 22, Lexi and I both agreed that rather than reducing it to just the contract cost, that it would be wise to keep in a little extra because we will have those carryover cases that will just... Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and so. uh, the other part was uh, when you add together the mental health, the medical relief to the poor and, uh, and uh, the Redfield thing, you know, we're, we're talking about, uh, oh, about $4,000 plus there. So those things are, are things we have to do. And we should expect that as time goes on and hard times, uh, those may, they may increase a lot. Andy pointed out the other day when he was bringing bills up, he brought one for about $1,600 worth of inmate medications Correct. that were purchased in Union County because that's where they're being mm -hmm. boarded. And unfortunately, you know, that money's not going to Clay County pharmacies. So. Lewis Drug, it's that one. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes, so. That, that was something I noticed too, is that those sorts of, just because we're housing prisoners elsewhere, some of those indirect costs are still in our lap. Oh yeah. Right. It's still in our lap and not helping the county either. Correct. Right. Correct. Just just an aside. Yep. And we were up to 25 inmates yesterday. Were we? Yep. <laughs> That's that uh maybe we're gonna have to buy a bigger bus. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a motion and a second. Any any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, the garage door on Clover Hall at the fairgrounds. Somebody must have hit it. It's not working properly. It needs to be replaced. So the bids that we were sent from overhead door, one is insulated, the other is non-insulated. That's it. I saw that. Is I just that I just had her price the uh, an insulated one. Just there was thoughts of what we might do in the future. I didn't know if would we ever be heating Clover Hall? That was the thought. The, if if anything ever changed, if they used Clover Hall as a 
depending on what we do with the other buildings or whatever might happen. I just had her price it just to see what the difference was. It's not something that we need to spend the money on right now. Yeah, I remember. I I don't remember what the the poles and the <laughs> the support structures in Clover Hall is, are like. Is it a? I think they're okay. It's okay. usually just the roof, you know, holes in the roof we fix. Yeah. Okay. No insurance to cover any of this. Not that I'm aware of. We have our money to, to handle it. The building fund. Yeah. But I'm I'm wondering if, you know, since it's not really a current need and uh, we you can post insulate those those guys. I just saw looked at some uh, uh, opportunities to do that in my last trip to Menards. And uh, I wonder if just going with the standard one would be good enough. Yeah, I think between it's a double double thickness one, right? It's got inside and outside uh, uh, facing uh, the it's my understanding. Yeah, some, you know, some are just have a single facing on the outside. And the inside is is open. And if we were to insulate that be an advantage, but some have are both inside and outside, which Give it a little more structural strength is all. Right. I'd move that we go with the uninsulated door. I'll second it. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? This doesn't consider this doesn't include wiring. Yeah. So we'll have to get somebody to to wire the motor. Yeah, it presently has a opener, right? Uh it's 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 chain. Oh, it's manual as far as, as if I remember okay. right. That's why we need the wiring. Sure. Okay. No, that's fine. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Ockler. Yes. Motion passes. Anybody have anything else? I'm uh, officially leaving my other job at the end of the year. So you'll probably have to put up with more of me, whether that's better or worse. <laughs> I don't know. You're officially retiring? I'm officially re finally retiring. Well, you retired before, but are you quitting working now? Yes, yes. That's the, the plan right now is that uh, there's a certain symmetry there. I sold that company 10 years ago and I've been working as an employee for exactly 10 years it's on, been that long. on December 31st. Wow. So just notice that you, you, you know, you may put up with more of this sort of thing, uh, looking at vouchers. I'm hearing Dick has more time for other boards. Yeah. <laughs> I just had a quick update on the roof project. Um, they've been here, they've done a lot of staging and getting ready to really go. Um, I think their plan was to do the little roof above the north entrance today. Um, with the court schedule, it looks like next Friday they'll be doing the tear off up there. They just can't before then because there's there's too much court. Between that and the forecasted weather at the end of this week. Yeah. So there was a little drizzle this morning. Yeah, but I I will say that they have been very, very good thus far. I think everybody that has any position of authority has come in and introduced themselves to me, asked if, you know, there's anything that I need, gave me phone numbers to get a hold of them. And, um, you know, they've been really conscious of working around that court schedule too, because they know their equipment is loud and they didn't want to cause any problems. So, I mean, it might take us longer to get things done, but he said, they're definitely not going to be able to do it while there's any court. So, okay. uh, going forward too, on thinking of that, uh, I am, getting some equipment to evaluate how good tuck pointing is being done on a couple of boards that I, I'm uh, members of on other buildings. And uh, later this uh, sometime, once it gets cold enough, I could do, go around and do a, a thermal imaging to make sure that the tuck pointing is done uh, properly on this place or any deficiencies we might find. That's the easiest way to find tuck pointing errors. 
And uh, I'm willing to do that for this building too, if, if that falls within what you all would want to have happen. Yeah, no problem. No. That'd be fantastic. Um, the price is right. As for the safety center tuck pointing, that was supposed to start yesterday too. And I haven't seen them out there working, but I, I wouldn't say that they're not. Um, were they? Okay. So then that's going good. Good deal. Okay. I was, oh, go ahead. I was going to ask to touch base briefly on a couple of potential litigation matters in executive session, but okay. if we have time, if you guys need to go, we can talk about it another day. I'm good with it. I Do just it. had one. Oh, go ahead, Mike. Oh, go ahead. I just had one thing. Phyllis, you had mentioned Terry Taggart's replacement. Yes. How do we go about that? <laughs> He's been on so long, I really don't know. Uh, we can publish a request for interest. Um, do we have a, a, a form people can fill out like the city has for committees? I think we do. Or we could discuss possible options and request folks. And, th and this is for the joint powers. Correct. correct. The joint powers, solid waste, which meets four times a year, twice in Vermilion, twice in Yankton. It does not take much time. <laughs> it does take interest. Okay. Yeah, I think it'd be great to um, uh, to put something out there and invite people to apply. Um, you know, uh, it may be that a lot of people don't apply, but I think asking is uh, is a really is a really good thing. It is for the joint power solid waste and recycling system board of directors. Do we, do we need to put an ad in the paper then. Yeah, we should. Yeah. Can we use the form? that we used for the building committee? That'd be a good one. That work or? I can't remember what we asked on there, but I'll take a look at it and send it to Phyllis. Mm -hmm. Phyllis. Sounds good. <clears throat> we'll just put that on the next meeting. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Mike, did you have something? Well, you, were, you had asked about the uh, uh, Vermilion Transit. They had the buses sitting outside. One sold, well, actually I shouldn't say it's sold, it was given to the CCC okay. and they haven't taken it yet. Uh, the other one they're trying to sell and that's why it's left outside. And the other two? Yeah, yeah. I told her four and she said, well, it should have been only two, but I said, well, there's four. So I there were five originally, weren't there? That sit outside? No, no, that, that they own. I think they might own eight, actually. Yeah, there's more. Gotcha. Four I, sit outside overnight. I all the time. That's, what, and, that's uh, what he was saying. And so I asked Yonella and she said, she said two. So, well, she gave me an explanation for two, I guess. Yeah. And there's, I told there's her there's two was, buses and two vans. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know what they're given to the, if it's a bus or a van that they're given to the CCC. I don't know which. I'm assuming it's a van. But, but yeah, so I did follow up on it. So You're a I, bit far from your mic. Whoops, sorry. Sorry, Phyllis. <laughs> Yeah, I did follow up on back it. And yeah, <laughs> I have a tendency to do that. <laughs> We're relaxing. Yeah. All of you do. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Um, motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. Second. I'll, I'll call you around, sir. Uh, this is for legal legal purposes. You want to shut the door, Rod? Um, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Lockler. Yes. We're in executive session. Let me just put these guys into. Okay. Move to come out of executive session. Second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Lockler. Yes. We're in regular session. Anybody have anything else? Move to come out of commission. Move to adjourn. Adjourn. Yes. Second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call. Hammonds. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Lockler. 
Yes, we're adjourned. Thank you. Funny how it can be so hard to come up with a simple word like <laughs> adjourn. <Yes. laughs> Have a good week. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. That was a good one.